Hi, 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 and welcome back to the channel, everybody. How are you all doing? Well, there is no doubts about it that the doctor is in anal retentive mode. I am uh, now polishing these combustion chambers using a little flap disc on my little mini rotary tool with the extension. So I'm basically almost done with these. I've got this combustion chamber here to basically polish with this, and I'm done ready to move on to the next cylinder head, the last cylinder head. Many thanks must go out at this stage to Craig from Performance 351, who came on board with my uh, how to port the Aussie 302 2V cast iron cylinder heads in about uh, video six in the series of how to port these. And he brought with him his 20 years experience on how to, how to port these and how to reshape the combustion chambers in these closed chamber heads to be more like your modern day aluminium cylinder head combustion chamber. So a more efficient combustion chamber. That's what these are based on. Many thanks has to go to him for all the information he shared with that. Check out uh, video six if you want to see that. Um, the stuff that he shared with us all, how to get these shapes, what to do to get them. Thank you, Craig. If you're still watching, Thumbs up again, mate. Uh, we shall not forget the generosity you forwarded to us, teaching others and myself how to do this. Now, I also want to just chuck in here quickly, guys. I just apologise that the other series that I've been putting together, and that is the restoration of the underside of my 1969 Ford Falcon XW, I've put that on hold. And the reason for that at the end of the day is because part of the whole restoration of that vehicle and the pulling the transmission out, which by the way, guys, I got finished, it's out and I'm ready to pull the engine out, is so then I can actually put these ported heads back on my engine. But I realised that given that I'm somewhat spatially challenged, there's no other way to say it really with my very squashy single car garage, what's going to happen is I'm going to end up pulling my engine out. It's just going to be sitting on the engine stand, taking up space right in front of where my wife needs to get past to put our laundry in the dryer and she will not be a happy camper if she can't make it to that dryer to get our clothes dry. And let me tell you in no uncertain terms that that saying happy wife equals happy life is 100% correct. So I'm going to need to finish the other cylinder head porting that before I proceed with uh, pulling the engine out of the Ford Falcon. So I'll probably be a good week and a half, maybe two weeks, getting that other cylinder head ported. I'll probably chuck a, a video together, a couple of videos together in that time. You know me, guys. I, I put my videos out fairly frequently um, of bits and pieces of that port. If there's anything when I'm doing that that comes up that I haven't covered uh, in the series already with this first cylinder head that I have ported, or if there's any questions you guys have or anything that you'd like to see uh, with the porting, if you're watching the porting series that I haven't covered and you'd like to see it, by all means, uh, just leave a comment and I can uh, work on doing something like that, putting a video together about what your questions may be. Keeping in mind, guys, that I am a student of porting cylinder heads. I am not an expert, okay? I'm a student pretty much probably like a lot of people that are watching this. But like you guys, I'm willing to give it a crack. And that's what we're doing. Now, unlike our friend Craig from uh, Performance 351, who really knows what he's talking about when it comes to Cleveland and Cleveland heads, unlike him, I had an unfortunate conversation today with a fellow uh, who I've uh, connected with on Gumtree because he's selling a set of Aeroflow aluminium Cleveland 2Vs. You might have seen them, okay? There are a number of different Chinese brand Cleveland cylinder heads, Pro Comp, Speedmaster, you know, all these ones that you hear horror stories about. But I've been hearing good things about the Aeroflow. They're, again, they're a Chinese, they're a Chinese cylinder head, but the stuff that I've heard about them, they're quite good. And I know that Rocket Industries here in Australia, they sell uh, the Aeroflow Cleveland 2Vs assembled with a five-angle valve cut as well. So it's a race valve cut for, for just a little bit over 3K. Anyway, this guy is basically selling 
a set of these assembled, brand new assembled on Gumtree for about 3K, right? So I call the guy today to talk to him about his heads. I want to find out about the, the valve seats, the valves. He's like, oh, they're assembled. I don't know. It's like, oh, well, mate, I'd like to know, you know, what the what the go is with the valves. Are they angled valve cuts? Is it a, is it a three angle or five angle? Is it just a two? What's the go? Oh, I don't know. But well, I don't know why. Be, and then he just starts bagging Cleveland's. Okay, so the guy's selling Cleveland cylinder heads, and then he begins to tell me about all his experience racing, you know, cars and stuff through the years and this, that, and the other, and he's just bagging Cleve Cleveland's. And it was obvious to me because he's just talking about Chevys and this, that, and the other. And I, I don't get into these debates. I don't really care. I'm a car lover, whichever way it goes, but I'm not ignorant about Chevy heads, etc. like this guy was about Cleveland heads, banging on about how... What a waste of time four V Clevelands are. You know, and then when I'm when I shared with him that, you know, the heads that I'm putting, you know, the cylinder heads, if I bought them from him, they'd be going on a three nine stroker. He's like, oh, I don't know why people bother stroking their engines. You know, and it's like, well, maybe, maybe, mate, so then you've got talk without having to rev the ring out of the car, you know? Oh, blah, blah, blah. And he's just going on and on. Let me give you a tip, guys. Cleveland four V, Cleveland two V are and these old factory heads, he's bagging these out. These things ate Chevy heads of the same era for breakfast. And if you cam a 4V cylinder head sensibly, and especially if you put it on a larger stroke, they are an amazing head, okay? Even 4V heads on a bigger stroke with the right cam, man, you've got a killer head, even in those old 4V iron heads. They are just so expensive to buy in Australia now, it's ridiculous. People are asking, you know, four grand for an old set of four V heads that you've got to completely uh, restore. You've got to, you've got to machine them for, for screwing studs and everything, you know what I mean? So they're just uh, cost prohibitive, unfortunately. Part of the reason why I'm porting these two Vs. And plus, again, really, even though I think a 4V cylinder head on a 393 with a good cam, a nice big intake manifold like mine, would still do really well on the street. You're not going to um, struggle on that low down RPM with the right stroke and the right cam. I don't think you'd struggle with that even on a 351, by the way, if you get it right. People just put too big a cams in them and then wonder why they're dogs. But uh, I, now I've completely lost what I'm saying. But a 2V... As I've said, and I've said over and over again, and this iron 2V cylinder head, I wouldn't, I don't need bigger than that. Okay, I don't need bigger than that. This can get me locked up and my car confiscated every day of the week without needing to have more power. Simply interested in a set of aluminium heads because, you know, I, I am tempted by something like that. If it was the right price and they were reasonably uh, decent cylinder heads, even if they are Chinese, um, and those aeroflows, like I say, they, they are getting pretty good vibes compared to the pro crap and the speed shitter or whatever they're called, heads, which, you know, the, the valve seats and stuff fall out of and rattle around. Apparently those aeroflow ones are not too bad. But I'm certainly not going to buy them off that clown after he bagged the shit out of Cleveland's. If you want to sell a set of Cleveland heads, mate, how about talking Cleveland's up instead of bagging the shit out of them? So there it is. The lonely C5 transmission now out of my uh, Ford Falcon. So, indeed, I really am getting, uh, well, I'm ready, basically, apart from jumping under the car, undoing the engine mount bolts and uh, taking the extractors, undoing the extractors from the rear part of the exhaust. Everything else is off the motor. I've taken the radiator out. The carby, the, 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 the sniper is all off. Everything's off the engine, and the engine's ready to pull out. Hi there, guys. I can see myself in the reflection. Anyway, the other thing, guys, is I have also... I might come this way so then uh, we're not uh, inundated by light, but I've also put together my engine crane ready to pull the motor out. So that's where we stand. I've just got to get, like I said, that other cylinder head ported. Once that's uh, ported, we shall proceed with uh, getting the engine out of my uh, 69 Ford Falcon and we can uh, proceed with that series on how to restore the underside. The other day I picked up a new set of lower control arms for this. Uh, one of my control arms I noticed the other day is a little bit bent. 
I don't know what I hit, uh, but it's not in it's not in great nick. So that's not going to be great for a wheel alignment. Even though not that long ago I did again a couple of videos on how to do a DIY wheel alignment on these guys at home. It's probably not the alignment it should be now that I've discovered that uh, one of those lower control arms is a little bit bent. So I, I, I forked out for a couple of Scott Drake lower control arms. They'll be going in as well when we do the resto. Uh, all that sort of stuff will be in there. Well, guys, I'm just going to leave it at that for just a little update about what's going on. I've got to get into porting this other cylinder and um, then I'll catch up with you guys in the not too distant future. Until I see you guys in the next video, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, take it easy out there.